And the Oscar goes to everything, everywhere, all at once. Nominated for 11 Academy Awards, Everything, Everywhere, All at Once won seven Oscars tonight for actor in a supporting role, actress in a supporting role, original screenplay, film editing, directing, actress in a leading role, and best picture. Nothing for Banshees, Fablemans or Tar. Who would have guessed that in late August? Weird Oscar season, that's what you get when you expand the members to 9,000 and invite kids that doesn't watch movies and only vote for the most popular movie on social media. I, I think there will be a little backlash in the, in the coming months uh, ahead, simply because it won so many awards. I think that if it had only won, what are you shaking your head for? If it had won three awards like CODA, or Green Book, people, like, might... I, I think it won too many awards. Like, is it on the level of a network? No, it's not. This isn't an all-time classic, timeless movie. I, like, come yes, on. Yes, it is. No, it's not. Yes, it is. I think so, too. I, I think, think we, so we've too. already covered the fact this is one of the all-time, like, classic movies. Like, oh, yeah. it, it, uh, without a doubt. I, I can't even count the amount of times I've watched and rewatched this movie. It gets stronger, and I find new details every single time. We've already brought up the fact that it's probably going to be in film school classes in yeah. the future. And and I, I think exactly what we were talking about earlier in the episode is going to be true in, in the, the years and years to come. There was never any backlash because this movie was so... Like, what is not to love about this film? And I think that's only going to remain. It won seven Oscars. It won the most above the line Oscars of any movie ever in the history of the Academy. Do you think, do you honestly think that this is the best acted movie in the history of film? Jeff. I'm asking. I, I love the film. I think, I think it's. I think all love the film and say it's a great film and say it's the best one of the year. I want to talk about the. Forget this year. Let's talk about all time. This won more above the line Oscars than any movie ever. Okay, Does it so deserve to be that movie? I'm gonna I'm gonna answer that question with this comment. If if you're gonna compare apples to apples here, so everything everywhere, uh, streetcar named desire network. Which movie am I gonna watch right now? Which movie would I go to? I'm gonna go to everything everywhere all at once. That simple. That's him. Yeah, yeah. Jeff's not responding, so I'm assuming. How can you even respond to a point like this? Like, In five years, nobody will watch everything everywhere all at once. The movie is made. It is over long, two hours, 19 minutes, confused, and generally bizarre. In fact, nobody has watched a single Best Picture winner five years later since 2007's No Country for Old Men. Well, the, the Oscar winner last night, the big Oscar winner that took everything home, was everything, everywhere, all at once, forever, for, for the rest of time. That movie ended up winning Best Actress for Michelle Yao. It ended up winning Best Picture. Um, it ended up winning also, I believe, did it win Best Director? I think it won Best Director as well. Uh, it won Best Director. Uh, it, it basically swept. Now, the reason that it's swept is because it, it fulfills two intersectional checkboxes. It fulfills the Asian intersectional checkbox, and we already had Parasite the one a couple of years ago, so we've done that. But it's, it's a very gay movie. <laughs> Everything Ever All at Once is, is a very LGBT movie. Uh, it, it has the, the, the main storyline is essentially an Asian immigrant mom who is working really hard and ignoring her family, but she has to learn that, that her lesbian daughter's girlfriend should be introduced to grandpa who has to be taught to accept the, the, the new ways of the world. This is a tactical mistake by Hollywood because in five years, nobody's going to be watching everything everywhere all at once. It's just not going to happen. It's going to be a movie like Birdman or The Revenant. You know, things were in the moment. People are like, oh man, that's a great movie. And then no one ever watches it again. Now, I know that critics fell in love with this movie. Again, I, I think I know the reasons why, but it is not, it's not, Top Gun was clearly the phenomenon of the year. 
the fact that there were so many people who were opposed to Top Gun was a quasi-political statement. It was sort of along the lines of this piece from MSNBC called Top Gun Maverick is the most insidious movie at the Oscars. This is from Zishan Alim, who said that it is a, it's insidious because it is very much in favor of the American war machine as a beacon of virtue and excitement. It's a poisonous kind of nostalgia, one that smuggles love of endless war into a celebration of live action. I think that's, that, that is one of the kind of subtle reasons that Top Gun had to lose. Uh, because it was just, it was kind of too pro-America. It wasn't allowed to win. Perhaps the worst Best Picture winner in the history of the Academy Awards. A tedious and pointless movie. Mildly amusing at certain points. But that's the absolute best thing that can be said about it. It was a weak year for Oscar movies. So everything everywhere all at once winning Best Picture might not be such a surprise. It was inevitable after its PGA. DGA and SAG triumphs that it would be showered with Oscar gold. Don't kid yourselves. Despite A24's brilliant artifice of marketing, its film shouldn't have won any awards last night, especially with Tar. The Banshees of Inishrin and Triangle of Sadness part of the nominees. What A24 has basically been able to do is make the post-screening experience just as interesting as the film itself. People will watch something like Everything Everywhere all at once and then go straight to social media, sharing memes, GIFs, tweets of the film. The actual screening experience gets lost for Brandy. Oh, and look, you can also buy those damn hot dog fingers on A24's online store. Cinema. The idea of turning a cinematic experience into something you can meme is concerning and not far off from the marketing ideas behind Marvel or Star Wars. Being an A24 fan now is a status, a kind of cult that, to the total obliviousness of the fan, removes them from the cinema. Michelle Yeoh, who grew up in a family of immense power, wealth and privilege in Malaysia, is now a symbol of repressed female heroism in the industry. Yo beating Kate Blanchett's all-timer of the performances will not be looked upon kindly in the years to come. The minute Viola Davis and Danielle Deadweiler complained about racism and not being nominated, you just knew that the lead actress Oscar was yo's for the taking. Academy voters uttering to themselves, let's make amends for our sins. K. Hui Kwan is a failed actor known for his performances at Short Round and Temple of Doom and Data in The Goonies both delivered when he was just 14 year old. It's another great story that fits well with the narrative that was built for every acting winner this year. I'm glad his career is back on track, but who are we kidding here? He didn't deliver an Oscar-worthy performance. Ford, Wilder, Coppola, Eastwood, Spielberg, Scorsese, Scheinert slash Kwan. A rich tradition of Oscar-winning filmmakers got shaken up last night as the industry tried to have you believe that the hipster duo known as the Daniels gave us the best directing of any movie last year. Yes, even in a year where Todd Field, Martin McDonagh, David Cronenberg, Jordan Peele, Ruben Ursland, Steven Spielberg and even Damien Chazelle delivered ambitious endeavors. In fact, as a commenter wrote last night after the show, zero Oscars for Tar, The Banshees of Inisher, Triangle of Sadness, and The Fablements. Combined, suffice to say, Ayao is more than just a movie now. It's a meme. A big, giant, inclusive meme that, according to its fans, has lots of heart, the hot dog fingers, Rakakuin, that rock with the jiggly eye, the bagel short round, we're currently living in this bizarre cultural idiocracy. Mike Judge's movie seems more relevant than ever before, all we need is a president and an Elisondo Mountain Dew Camacho to complete the transition to full-on idiocracy. Tar with zero Oscars tonight, the number one film of 2022. The best film across the board in virtually every category that you can put it up for, including picture, director, screenplay. Kate Blanchett, you look at the cinematography, you look at the editing, this is the best film of 2022, and it gets zero Oscars. And then you have Maverick, the biggest crowd pleaser, the film that brought people back to theaters, and that has one Oscar for sound. It was just not the best of nights for me. From a personal standpoint,
For the makers of everything ever, for the Daniel seemed like two good guys. For Quan, you know, after his long journey back to Hollywood, these are good things. No one is arguing that it's not a feel-good situation. But, 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 the film, the film is so overrated. <laughs> God. Exactly, Jennifer. How does Elvis walk away with nothing? How does this happen? What are we doing? A Gone Girl possibly uh, saying this, EEAO is possibly the most overrated movie of the century. <laughs> I mean, uh, 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 2023, 2022, 2021, go all the way back. Uh, I, it's hard to think of a film that's more, in my estimation, overrated than everything, everywhere, all at once. It's a film I saw a year ago. Uh, right down the street at Burbank, you know, on a Thursday night when it opened, oh, I've heard it's, it played at South by Southwest. It's a great, you need to see it. And the thing about Everything Everywhere that's so frustrating is it is a good film up until about the 145 mark. And then we get into that repetition and it just destroys it. So I know a lot of you, but look, see, this is the beauty of this film. It's so polarizing, right? So you have those who don't love the film like myself don't hate it just don't love it and then you have people like vault of the future here saying they love it they're glad so it's very much a polarizing film which i can relate to i feel like that describes me i'm kind of polarizing either love or you hate it is what it is hopefully you love more than hate after years of spreading their awards around the academy has showered a piece of multiverse marvel mulch with seven oscars the membership changes of recent years are also now showing a different motivation among the members. Fraser, Yo, Curtis and even K. Hui Kwan are all the beneficiaries of day sentimentality in general emotional cappuccino froth over real coffee and perceptive judgment. The more I think about it, the more I laugh. Top Gun, Maverick was really normie heaven, and represented everything that made most people feel good about movies. The oldsters loved the genteel except for the bloody finger stubs, and traditional banshees. The younger generation loves Elvis. RGHG? Cineasts are obsessed with tar, and plebs anxious about World War III are gripped by all quiet on the western front. So the rubes tune in and watch their favorite films lose as they listen to some director extolling the virtues of drag shows for children, and all of their suspicions about Hollywood and the Oscars were confirmed. This was the last straw for normies, and mainstream audiences, I suspect. They will completely give up. As someone said, this is not an event with any relationship to us, or even worthy of attention anymore. It exists in its own realm, for an insular, shrinking group. The ratings in future years will stay in the cellar region, as award shows get smaller and smaller. Strange as this may seem. The cable has blanked out and I have nothing but Twitter and the trades to rely upon for news of the final Oscar outcome. But a filmmaker friend has just written me, the death of cinema. The Al Baddies have stormed the Bastille. Because I used to love her, but it's all over now. Identity, narrative, sentiment. Except for all quiet on the Western Front, true quality took a backseat. How is it possible that the highest grossing, best reviewed film of the year by critics and audiences that was credited with saving the film industry amid near total collapse would not be winning Best Picture at the Oscars on Sunday, March 12th. There is no question that Top Gun Maverick should be winning. In the real world, that is what would happen. It deserves it more than any movie ever has in the 22 years I've been covering the Oscars. But will it win? Of course not. The movie that will likely win instead is Everything Everywhere All at Once, an original, imaginative film about an elderly Chinese mother, Michelle Yeoh, who must save the world by popping in and out of the multiverse so that she can eventually accept and love her gay daughter, Stephanie Su, flaws and all, and appreciate her long-suffering husband, Ki Hee Kwan. Some love it, some hate it, but there is no question why it has swept the season so far and is likely to win a whole bunch of Oscars on Sunday, including Best Picture. There isn't a film that reflects the woke left more than this one. This kind of winner makes the industry feel safe. They can hide behind who they really are, mostly white, mostly male, by shrinking back into the shadows, centering people of color, and voting for films that reflect the ideology of the utopians. I mean, come on now.
Watched by millions in their prime, the Oscars used to celebrate one of the greatest things ever invented by this country, movies. The more people those movies attracted, the better they were rewarded for it by the Oscars. The Oscars mattered to the people because the people mattered to the Oscars. What is a step in the right direction for the Academy was that they have, for the first time in a while, included some blockbusters and money makers in their lineup. But there is no getting around that blazing number for Top Gun Maverick at a time when it was a struggle to get people out of their homes to see movies at all. When I first started my Oscars website, a business I've been running for 22 years, I often used the phrase, too big to ignore, which meant a film became a cultural phenomenon, a box office success, and the Oscar voters would be forced to reward it for that. That was true of Jim Cameron's smash hit, Titanic. They didn't want to give him Best Picture and Best Director, but they had to. It defied expectations and became the highest grossing film of all time. It was too big to ignore. Now though, there is no such thing as too big to ignore at the Oscars. They've been rewarding films that made no money, but awarded the first woman or the first black directed film or the first film made by a woman of color or the first film with a predominantly deaf cast. They've been chasing that high since Green Book won. Box office should matter. It is a much stronger measure of a film's ultimate success. The industry and the Oscars have become an aristocracy of a kind that seems to believe telling stories that resonate inside their royal court have any meaning beyond those castle walls. They don't. Their primary mission seems to be to drive propaganda to audiences, the kind of thing so many conservatives feared back in the 1940s and 50s about communism. Now it's not only happening, but it's almost mandated. They continually tinker with their utopian diorama in an effort to make it more perfect, more equitable, more pure. The Spirit Awards have made their acting categories gender neutral. The British Film and Television Academy was so plagued by accusations of racism, they mostly eliminated the privilege of their own members nominating the acting and directing categories, opting instead for a committee to hand-pick equitable choices. The Golden Globes were canceled after being accused of racism in a mass hysteria event on par with Salem in 1692. They are slowly scrabbling their way back after changing up their memberships and their rules. And the Oscars have an inclusivity mandate set to take effect in 2024. The already wokest of woke industry that is currently experiencing a kind of no white men for any jobs ever has in place official policy to be inclusive in front of and behind the camera for a film to even qualify for the Oscars. Every speech is either a sermon or a plea for absolution. Every win is a way to say, see, we fixed the problem. Everyone is supposed to applaud along like they don't know everyone is voting for people of color so that they don't look like racists. Is that fair to the winners? What kind of an honor is that if their main purpose is to shield voters from attacks and make them look good? The explosion at the end of Jaws was unlike anything any of us ever saw. It gave us deep satisfaction to what was not a real shark at all, but a supernatural evil impossible to destroy. Jaws turned out to be a foreshadowing of the 1980 election. It wouldn't be that surprising that five years later, America would abandon the left almost completely and vote for Ronald Reagan, whose strong leadership was something everyone by then craved. But Jaws didn't win Best Picture either. One Floor of the Cuckoo's Nest won instead. The ultimate movie about a lost man. Could the embrace of Top Gun Maverick be a foreshadowing for our future as we all begin to seek the strong leadership we've been missing? Who's to say? But we do know that this is the movie of the year, by any measure and beyond any doubt. If they don't give it their top prize, which they won't, then it's their loss. This film ignited something in all of us. It isn't even something that has to be explained. Just sit anyone down in front of it, and they won't be able to resist being carried away by the storytelling, the romance, the action sequences, the score, and the humanity. We had no idea how much we were missing movies like this. Good stories, well told. We need to believe as Americans that we can achieve impossible things. Movies can't fix us, but they can entertain us. And in so doing, make our lives a little bit better. No other country can make movies like Jaws and Top Gun Maverick. In 10 years, most people won't remember the films that were nominated for Best Picture. 
They barely even know what won in the past 10 years, hell, even 20. They'll look back on this year and wonder how it all could have gone so wrong that a movie people love that much was not named the best picture of the year. Maybe that question takes us to the inevitable answer, that once the ship hits the iceberg, it's all over but the shouting. Oh my god! Look at this! You got me crying, man! Oh. Oh.